Hey guys, in today's video we are going to look at three thoroughly ancient plugins that are still very, very relevant today. So um, these plugins, to the best of my knowledge, they're all around about 15 years old, which in terms of software is completely archaic, right? So, I mean, there's very few of you that are playing 15-year-old video games. I mean, yeah, you do, but quite often you don't. Um, we're not using 15-year-old doors most of the time. Uh, we're not using 15-year-old operating systems, are we? No. So, yeah, these, these plugins have just... They're fairly unique. I've chosen three that have yet to be matched by anything newer for the most part. So the first one we're going to take a look at is Oxford Inflator, Sonox Inflator. Let's go. Okay, so these, it's, it's not going to be um, a thorough tutorial for each plugin. I just want to pick the characteristics of why I think they're still completely relevant today despite being so old. Um, An Oxford Inflator is its a little bit um, mysterious. It has a bit of a cult following, um, especially with, it seems to be, the rock fraternity. But what it does is, according to Oxford plugins, it is a, a kind of exciter, and we're looking at adding weight and depth and uh, a particular character to a sound without going into the artifacts that you can often get with compression. So having a look at the user interface here, it's very simple. We've got an input and an output fader. <clears throat> now, I rarely touch those, so I sometimes touch the output fader. Uh, you can use the input fader to promote saturation or distortion, but it's not what I use this plugin for. This clip button in the middle, if you switch this off, you can technically process signal beyond zero dB. Um, but again, it's not what I use this plugin for. I've got other plugins that do that better. Uh, but then in the, in the middle, this is what the real meat and potatoes of this plugin is. We've got the effect slider, so the effect amount and the curve. Curve is basically the, the style of effect that you're uh, uh, using. It actually tells you there. But basically down at the bottom here, it's richer and warmer. At the top, it's denser and more in your face and anywhere in between. To put it very simply, let's just get that back to zero. <clears throat> now band split um, turns this into a multi-band processor. The effect for me is fairly subtle most of the time. There's a few scenarios where you might want to use it, especially with if you're if you're putting it on material with a very wide range of frequencies. Technically, band split would be superior, but um, a lot of the time I don't find it adds that much to the mix overall. Now, what I want to show you first, I've actually got an instance of this on the master, and I have a limiter afterwards. The limiter is only catching peaks; it's not actually doing any. Uh, gain reduction at all as it stands right now. So I'm going to play this. I've used this, I think I've used this before in another video. Let me just play it through. And at the moment, uh, inflator's not doing anything. So if I switch it in and out, you won't hear an effect. Now, all you really need to do is apply the effect amount. Uh, it does even say in the manual, it's often best to have this set to 100%, but let's just fade it in slowly and see what kind of effect it has. There will be some um, level increase, which will try and balance out so that you can actually hear the processing rather than just the, the volume increase. So it adds so much presence and weight, right? Uh, these words are, you know, you have to do this, presence, weight. Mojo, what do they even mean? But it's just a, a quality of the sound that improves to my ears. Um, now we've got it set to 100%. I just want to change the curve upwards and downwards so you can hear the character of this as well. It's definitely more mellow. Definitely more in your face. But let's just keep it at maximum. Let's keep the effect to maximum and the curve to maximum. Um, I just want to try and modify this output fader so that we're not just hearing an increase in volume. Sounds fairly close. And I'm just going to use this effect in button in and out so that you can hear the effect of the, the processing rather than the level discrepancy.
there is some volume increase, but it's doing far more than that. You're, you're getting like a, a far denser mix and we're not hearing any of the crushed sound you get from a compressor. I'll tell you what I want to listen to, what I can hear on here. The lead line has quite heavy um, delay left and right. I've got quite heavy ping pong delay. So if you focus on the ping pong delay, that doesn't change level that much. But as I switch this in and out, you'll hear everything else in the background really moving forwards and backwards. So hear the pings. Pings are still pretty much where they were. They're a little bit lower, but everything else has disappeared. Let me just take this down a bit more. As I bring this in, you can hear everything come alive again. Now this is a plugin that's used quite often um, pre-limiting. It's almost like, I, I don't want to call it a pre-mastering plugin, but it's used like that quite a lot. So that's one use on the master. So let me just switch this off. I do have another channel here, which I've got muted at the moment, which is a little drum loop I found in the Ableton stock library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Inflator on the drum loop and have a listen to the kick and the snare and the hi-hats relative to each other. I'm just going to play with the controls, but listen to everything relative to each other. And especially the kick drum at certain settings, you'll hear it much Look, hit fatter. It's going to sound fatter. Let's do it. Let's turn it on. There you go. Boom. That's more mellow. Let's try band split here. There's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, down at the bottom, there, the kick drum is emphasized quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's really this is about this plugin is about playing with the controls until you find the sweet spot for for your material, what you're feeding into it. So this is the first one I'd have a look at. And the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to show you these three plugins as well is that because they are so old, they're all, almost always on sale two or three times a year. Now, I only bought Inflator last year. I mean, people have been raving on about it for years. But it wasn't something I really appreciated until I, I bought it. And I think I paid £40. So it's probably going to be 40 or £50, pounds, euros or dollars uh, a couple of times a year. Uh, that's the first plugin. Now let's go on to the second one. Hello again. So the second plugin we're going to look at is Arbase. Now I have looked at Arbase before in another Sonic Academy video. Um, but this time it's in a slightly different context. Before I was looking at replacements for Arbase. But since I've realized that there, there isn't really a replacement for real or otherwise that does what Arbase does. So in this case, I've placed our base on my base channel. Funnily enough, just switch our base off. And I want to solo this channel. It's already soloed. Just so that you can hear what it's like dry. So this is just a heavily filtered Super Saw Reese style base. And what our base does is it's another kind of titillator or exciter um, specifically designed to help bass sounds fit into a mix and or be more present on smaller speakers. So this is adding um, harmonics to a fundamental frequency, which you can set here. There's a slider at the bottom where you can set the frequency at which you want the, the plugin to work on. And then we've got a, a, an intensity dial as well. This is the updated UI, by the way. As far as I know, this is the only change they've made over 15 odd years. I don't know exactly when this was released, but it's very, very old. Uh, you've got input and output um, meters, but really you're just going to be using the frequency and the intensity. So let's just have a listen to what it's doing in solo. So I'm changing the frequency here and the intensity. If I push this too much, it's going to clip very fast because the incoming sound is so big. Um, 
so yeah, it, it kind of sounds like a resonant sweep, but it's doing more than that. It's adding harmonics throughout the, the range of frequencies of this bass sound. Um, now, one thing I will say, I've added this after my EQ. I have an EQ on the bass sound ready, and I'm rolling off some of the top end. So I'm, I'm adding this afterwards, so that if it does add any harmonics after the fact, they're not being filtered out by the EQ, just so that you can hear it properly. So that's it in solo. I just want to try it in the mix as well, because this is where it really... Uh, really shines. I'm going to turn it off first, then I'm going to introduce it and just play around with the sliders. Again, this is another plugin where, I mean, theoretically, you'd want the frequency set to the root note, hello, the root note of the bass, but this bass note's changing, so you can't really do that. Um, if you had a very static one note bass line, then maybe you'd want to try a frequency that's a, a multiple, an octave multiple of that bass root note, but I tend to do it by ear. I do a lot of stuff by ear. I'm not that technical, me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the frequency and the intensity and find what I perceive to be the sweet spot on these speakers in this room. You know, you might hear it differently on the headphones, but this is what works for me. By the way, I'm just pulling down the output level a little bit because it is clipping down at the bottom here. I actually like it quite low here. It's very, very fat with the pH. Um, it might be too much, but I do like the way it sounds. Um, I'm just gonna switch it in and out, see what difference it makes. I like it a lot. Yeah, see the way it kind of... I'm kind of doing the opposite of what I usually do with our bass. Usually I try and add the harmonics higher up, but in this case I'm making it much thicker lower down, which is kind of what you're trying to do with this bass anyway. Now I've done this with the bass line in this track, I would probably adjust the, the actual level. Yeah, because it's actually, it's moving it from very low, mid-low to low-low. But I could also make it more present higher up. Yeah, I mean, our bass, it's a fine tuning plugin. Um, it's not something you want to overdo with the intensity. Um, but I use this all the time. I know a load of, um, there's at least two trance artists I know, I won't mention names, that use this on everything, everything. Every track they do, our bass is on. Um, definitely worth a purchase. I bought this one for, I believe, $29. It's almost free. In fact, almost all of the Waves plugins are on sale for $29 at some point. So this is, this is a, a true no-brainer. So that's our bass, um, on to the next one. Hello again. It's a thousand degrees in the UK at the moment. Now the last plugin, uh, last but by absolutely no means least, let me just get, get the old boy up, is Echo Boy, Sound Toys Echo Boy. Now this thing, the earliest, I'm not sure exactly what the release date was, but I know Sound on Sound reviewed it in 2006, so it's at least 15 years old. In fact, this plugin is so old it's had children. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, so this is, I don't know, it's the least unique of all the plugins we've looked at today. So our bass does something fairly unique, for example, and so does Inflator. There isn't really any equal. But you could argue that this is just a delay plugin, but it does things in such a manner and it sounds so good 
that it really still hasn't been replaced by anything. Um, so just a quick look at the user interface. It's one of the one of the worst things about the plugin actually is the way it looks. It's quite hard to to kind of see what's going on, especially in this dark room with this dark user interface. But it is what it is. Never mind. So we can choose the echo times here, feedback. We've got a filter built in. Coming over to the middle, we we can do a tap tempo and we can add groove to the taps, the delay taps. Then we can choose the delay mode, single dual, ping pong, or rhythm echo. If we do that, we get different readouts on the left. Again, I'm not going to do a few full tutorial of this plugin. It's just a brief um, kind of introduction to what it actually is if you haven't already had a look at it yourself. And then we've got input and output knobs. You can add saturation. And then we've got a, a, a kind of modeled distortion effects thing built into it as well. Now, what I think I'll do is get out of the way. Um, oh, by the way, you can edit this as well. This style can be edited. So you can you can EQ the effects algorithms built into it. Uh, add diffusion, wobble, saturation, more saturation, and then you've got presets built into those as well. So it's a very in-depth, albeit highly irregular user interface. Uh, it could do with a redesign, but it is what it is. It's very familiar and people have been using this for years. So I have created, let me sh make sure this is switched off. I've created this kind of odd sound. I don't know what you call it, maybe techno, but with a weird non-techno vocal. <laughs> I actually haven't created it. I've just put some loops together. So what I want to do is put some effects, put some delay on the vocal because it's always favorite. And I'm just going to choose a preset at random. Um, chorus and modulation. I don't really want the vocal. Slapper. Who love, we all love a slapper. Oh, turn it on. I'm really good at not turning things on. <laughs> now, what I want you to listen to is the character of the delay. I should have mentioned this is one of the reasons why this delay has stood the test of time because it just sounds amazing. It's uh, really good at the old, distorted, saturated sound. I know I mentioned that software doesn't do it very well, but the caveat is that Sound Toys are one of the few companies that do get this right. Turn the saturation up. That's breaking up now. Let's um, choose another one. In fact, I'm just going to run through some presets so you can hear what it's like. Heavenly. That needs filtering. Let's try something a little bit more dirty. Um, feedbackers. Bucket Brigade. Probably This might not work on vocal so much, but just, just have a listen to it. Listen to that distortion. It's so good. I mean, I wouldn't use this particular preset on a vocal, but it's... Yeah, it sounds so good. Anyway, uh, let's find something that we might actually use because I want to look at the uh, the other version of this as well. Uh, pop star radio echo. Can you? I mean. <laughs> Those echoes sound so juicy. It's such a good plugin. Do I sound excite? I am excite. Right, let's try and get this right. Okay, that'll do. For the purposes of this demo, that'll do. Uh, but basically, you get so much control over what's going on 
<clears throat> with this plugin, and the delays themselves sound so juicy that it's um, it's an essential tool for me. Now I own all of the Sound Toys plugins. Um, I bought the Sound Toys V5 bundle again on sale. I think I bought the lot for a couple of hundred pounds. Um, but I've seen again, I've seen this plugin on sale for about fifty local units, dollars, pounds, euros. It's something that is always on sale. Um, but something else I would look at. Now I've got a little percussion channel here. But I mentioned earlier that Echo Boy had a child and that child is Echo Boy Junior. And it's a much simplified version of Echo Boy with a few extra modes. So what I want to do is use this percussion loop as a basis to create some stereo excitings. So let's let's have a look at what we can do. Let's turn the delay on. And again, this is a kind of t I know the vocal doesn't really fit with this, but I wanted something long and drawn out to be able to show the delays properly. But with this kind of techno-ish sound, a lot of the artists are using really gritty analog style sounds to fill up the stereo field because they tend to be fairly empty mixes right so you can get away with really going to town with these analog textures so let's try and create one with echo boy J -J -J junior um now i'm gonna go ping pong because i like ping pong studio tapes okay flex nice let's go back to memory see what we can do saturate it a bit um i think i want to go one eighth dot note Filter it a bit. I'll just switch it off for a second. Okay, I've made a decision here. What I want to do is I want to filter out that clap hat thing a little bit before we hit the delay. So let's go to EQ8. Try some of the other modes. I like memory. Yeah, it's really gritty and grainy, isn't it? And then I'm going to put another EQ afterwards just to make sure we haven't got any really low stuff in there. Yeah, we don't need any of this. massive fan of that vocal I'll be honest but it's there for demo purposes so I would actually grab both of these if you're gonna only buy one um, get Echo Boy because you do have more to, to play with um, but I haven't come across anything that comes close to sounding as chewy and dirty and gritty as this plugin in terms of delay um, and again it is ancient 15 years at least so you can buy all these three dirt cheap and they are almost essentials i would say these are something that I, these are these are plugins i use quite a lot all the time so uh, i hope you found this video useful today and um, i'll see you in the next one cheers 
Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video then smash a like and if you want to be notified about new videos hit the subscribe and notification buttons. PEACE!